If you're looking for a new way to break weight loss plateaus, burn some extra fat, and keep yourself accountable without hating yourself, then keep watching because this is a video all about how intermittent fasting can help you do that. But before we get into that, here's the gym edit. Welcome back guys, I hope you enjoyed that gem edit. And now for the portion of the video that you probably came here for. You might want to strap in because I have quite a bit of information behind the camera that I have to share with you. First off, intermittent fasting. What is it? Intermittent fasting is an umbrella term for various diets that cycle between a period of fasting and non-fasting. It's not a diet, it's a pattern of eating. It makes no changes to what you eat, only when you eat. Most commonly, there's two main ways to actually do this. The first of which is Martin Birkin's Lean Gained model, or the 16 to 8 model. This consists of a 16 hour fasting period and an 8 hour eating period. And most commonly, it just means you skip breakfast, you have your first meal around noon, 
and around 4 p.m. is your next meal, and then your last one is around 7 or 8 p.m. The second method is the Brad Pilon method, which means you fast twice a week for a 24-hour period. The most common form of doing this is you stop eating around 5 p.m. one day and start eating around 5 p.m. the next day, and you just do this twice a week. And the most scientific studies have been done on the Brad Pilon method, the 24-hour fasting method, and the most compelling evidence has come from this method. So I'd say if you're just going to start off, Try and do a 24-hour fast to see how you can handle it. And just throughout that day, just drink water, zero-calorie drinks, stuff like that. You'd be surprised a lot of people find that it's not as hard as they seem. A lot of questions you might be having and a lot of questions that other people have are things like, how is this possible? Why would you skip breakfast? Isn't it bad to skip breakfast? What's the point in fasting 16 hours a day? What are the benefits? Is there science behind it? All that kind of stuff. So to start off, I'm going to cover how intermittent fasting or IF actually works. So to understand how IF works, we're going to have to understand the difference between the two main states of intermittent fasting, the fed state and the fasted state. When your body is digesting and absorbing food, it's in the fed state. This happens for about three to four hours from the time you start eating something. And in this time, it's very hard for your body to burn fat due to the insulin levels being so high. And speaking of insulin levels, I wouldn't particularly recommend intermittent fasting for people that have diabetes or if you're thinking about doing it and you have diabetes I definitely suggest consulting a doctor or a physician just because IF or intermittent fasting relies on long periods of time with low insulin levels and short spikes of high insulin levels so it might throw your body for a loop if you're not diabetic you should be fine now to get into the fasted state after that three to five hour fed state you end up going into a period known as the post-absorptive state, which is basically just a way of saying your body's not processing any more food or there ain't no food in your body. This typically lasts for about 8 to 12 hours after your last meal. After that 8 to 12 hours, you enter the fasted state. This is a period of time where it's much easier for your body to burn fat due to lowered insulin levels. And this allows your body to burn the excess fat that might not have been accessible back during a period where your insulin levels were high and were allowing glucose to be burned instead of fat. Because it takes about 8 to 12 hours to actually reach the fasted state, it's rare for our bodies to actually get to that point on a normal eating plan and normal eating periods. This is why many people who start intermittent fasting will actually lose weight without making any major changes to what they're eating, or even their amount of exercise. And speaking of that, let's get into the benefits of IF for intermittent fasting. It's a great way to get lean without actually cutting calories or going crazy about changing your whole diet up. In fact, most of the time you want to actually keep your calories the same when you start intermittent fasting. Most people just eat bigger meals within that shorter time frame. IF is also extremely good for maintaining muscle mass and actually gaining muscle mass while staying lean. It takes very little behavior change, but gives great results when it comes to losing bad weight and gaining good weight. And this allows IF to be simple enough to actually try, but meaningful enough to actually give results and be worth it in the long term. Another benefit is it makes your day a lot simpler. You don't have to worry about breakfast when you wake up. You can just get up, grab a glass of water, and get on with your day. Now, I love eating and cooking can be fun, but the time I save not having to worry about that one extra meal it just saves me so much stress, and it gives me that extra time that I didn't previously have in the morning. It's definitely just a big stress reliever. It's also much easier than dieting and just changing up everything you're eating. You can eat whatever you normally eat, just make sure it's within that specific feeding window. Personally though, I recommend a combination of both changing your diet and intermittent fasting, just so you have that sort of edge of having a healthy diet where you can still eat to get to your goals, but like still enjoy yourself and still eat what you would want to eat. So stay within your calorie intake and your macros and stay within that feeding window and you should be all good. There is a couple cons along with IF as well. The first being it can be very mentally straining on you to just kind of not eat for a while. The first couple of weeks you'll have some pretty bad cravings and you'll feel kind of hungry. But if you can just hold off for that period of time during those first few weeks, it definitely gets a lot easier and you'll actually find yourself not being hungry during the fasting periods and you'll find yourself not having those same cravings you used to have. And to some people, skipping breakfast just sounds like a complete sin, but if you actually eat a larger dinner towards the end of your uh, feeding period, you'll be surprised at how good you feel in the morning without even eating breakfast. And if you're worried about just like losing your breakfast foods that you love so much, you can always just eat those same foods, but maybe eat it for your first meal during your feeding period. It'll be more like a brunch, but you'll still get those same foods just at a different time. So let's get into how I personally do IF. 
For me, I start eating around noon and I stop eating around 8 p.m. every day. So I follow the uh, Martin Birkin 16-8 method. This method works the best for me because I work an eight to four work day at my day job every day. So in the morning, I'm able to get by with just like some water or something. And then throughout the beginning of the day at work, I can keep myself busy to fight off those cravings and fight off those small hunger feelings until I reach lunch around noon. And because I start eating around noon, that's also right when my lunch period starts at work. So it matches up perfectly and I can start eating for my feeding period right then. And then along with that, I actually get out at four, which is perfect timing for my next meal. So I'll eat either right when I get out or as soon as I get home. And then after that, I'll eat something around six, something small, just because I go to the gym at seven on weekdays. And then that last thing around six is usually the last thing I eat, with the exception of maybe a protein shake after after the gym. And I still follow my macros, I still follow my calories, it's just within that smaller window. And this actually allows me to eat larger meals within that feeding period, because I'm not trying to spread out smaller meals throughout the entire day, so I feel full the entire day. And those larger meals are generally more enjoyable and they might taste better than those small meals that I just have, like in the morning, lunch and dinner. I can skip breakfast and have a bigger, more enjoyable meal at for lunch and maybe even dinner. And personally, I'm actually very happy with IF and when I'm fasting and stuff like that. I've gotten used to it. I don't really get hungry anymore. And I mean, the first week I started it, I actually lost four pounds. And since then, there's been a pretty steady progression for losing weight since then. And not to mention, I've maintained and possibly even gained strength in some areas. So now, to help you decide if IF is right for you, if you're a diabetic, like I said before, you definitely want to consult a doctor or physician, or possibly just avoid IF just because of those insulin level differences. If you're looking to lose some weight but don't feel like going crazy about having to skip all your favorite foods, then I definitely recommend this because it helps you eat your favorite foods, but just within that window. If you're running a normal calorie cutting diet and you've just hit a weight loss plateau and you're looking for a way to break that plateau, I definitely recommend starting IF. That's actually what I had to do. I hit a plateau and I was not sure what to do. So I started IF and that's when I actually started losing more weight. I lost four pounds that week. Definitely helped me out. If you're trying to bulk and put on muscle, I probably wouldn't recommend IF unless you're trying to go for a very strict lean bulk, which then I would recommend it. But if you're just trying to put on as much strength and muscle as you can, I'd say try to avoid it because this is more of a way to stay lean rather than actually uh, build muscle and build strength. So in the end, I definitely recommend you guys try out intermittent fasting or IF. It's simple enough to start and stay with, and it definitely gives the results that make people happy over time. And does it break plateaus? Yes. Does it help burn fat? Yes. Does it help keep you accountable for eating within those windows and give you a basis to start losing some weight? Yes. So try it out, get out there, and get going. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped you guys. I'll leave links in my description for any sources I did for my research and any resources I have for weight loss, that things that will help you out or help you out with intermittent fasting. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll get back to pretty much all of you and help you guys out. Any concerns or questions you might have, I'll have those answered for you. And if this helped, please like and subscribe to see more videos like this every weekend. And again, thanks for watching. Keep progressing. Stay strong. See you next time.